Hi, so um, my name is Alex. I work at VMware. I joined um, in May 2018, so less than a year ago. Uh, and I'm really happy to be here today because I actually grew up uh, 15 kilometers away from here in Waterloo, so it's, I'm glad to come back home uh, to give this talk. Um, so when I joined VMware, we were, um, I joined the Open Source Technology Center. We were part of the Open Source uh, Program Office. So like Comcast, we also have um, our own program office. So I did some, some research on uh, how many companies actually have a program office, uh, like an open source program office. And it, I found this great blog post, and it said that 70% of tech companies with more than uh, uh, 10,000 employees will have, like, a, will have like 77% likely to have um, an open source program office. And we fall in that category. Um, and now among those 77%, um, I think it was 45, 44% that also contribute code upstream, right? So it's not only about consuming the open source, it's about also contributing back to the, to the communities. Um, so the OSCC at VMware, I get that from, from the website, sort of our like, mission statement. So essentially we want to make the, the communities um, better. Right? We want to contribute more, um, just not only code, but also just knowledge and reviews and everything to communities that are really important to us. Uh, so we have um, five areas of, um, exp of um, expertise in it. Kubernetes, so orchestration, containers. Uh, TURN, which is, um, um, which is donated to uh, CNCF. It's about um, um, inspecting containers. So service management, service mesh with someone who contributes to Envoy and Istio. Uh, Linux, tracing, um, security, and IoT and Edge, which, which, which is the team I'm on. So when Two years ago when we started the uh, OSCC, it was only two people, so we went from two to 24 engineers in two years, which was uh, pretty big. And when I joined, the only way they had to track everyone's work and everyone's uh, contribution, contributions was through like a weekly email, right? So every week, the person would have to write out all the contributions and all their PRs and all the commits and whatnot. So we have like one guy who contributes a lot to uh, Kubernetes and his emails every week were like that. Um, so he took him a good amount of time, right? Um, and with 24 engineers on the team doing that, it's obviously like a huge loss of time. Um, and in addition to that, our director would have to go through every single email and kind of copy everything and write his report, right? So I got with him, like, uh, we met, and we uh, kind of talked about how we can automate that and how to make all the, all the process. Um, so in those emails, we talk about uh, so the classic stuff, pull requests reviewed, uh, submitted and merged, um, issued open comments, um, but also you know, stuff that's less quantifiable, so community involvement, uh, talks, um, so things like that. So what I did, what we needed is essentially a dashboard and some kind of reporting tool to because it's very auto automatable, right? So a tool that just displays everything, um, specifically the GitHub and the Git data. So I started with just GitHub, uh, the GraphQL API, super easy to use. Um, looked at uh, reviews, um, sorry, uh, issues opened, issues commented on, issues closed, um, PRs merged, submitted, any, uh, any comments on PRs. Um, so I have a cron job that just queries that for the whole team, so for every single user on, um, uh, engineer on the team. And then I have a small Flask API that serves that to, um, to um, front end. And later, like the, the people that contributed to Linux were kind of jealous that their, 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 their commits were not on that tool, right? They were like, well, we also want to have our, our, um, our work like, being uh, recognized. So um, I looked at Percival, which is really useful. I have a list of of, um, of uh, repositories that I'm, that I'm parsing every day just to get the, re the, the commits. And that also helped us getting more information. So through, the, through the GitHub API, I wasn't really able to get who would actually merge a commit. So it was easy to find who wrote a commit, right? But to find who merged a commit, the GitHub API wasn't really, uh, really clear with that. So I just used Percival and look at the commit committer as opposed to the commit author. And that gave us a sense of who are the people who actually kind of review the commits and, and merge them. Um, so right now the tool is it's not open source yet. It's still like I'm only spending 5% of my time on it. 
it's um, kind of hacked it together since last August. And we have a, have a couple of views. I have a lot of work ahead of me. But um, it's maybe a little small, but that's essentially a summary uh, for the whole team. You can, you can change the, you can choose the time range. You see uh, all the, it's divided by projects. And then for each project, you see the uh, pull request comments, uh, pull requests merged, issues open, issues comments. And from a director, it's super easy to just go in, go in there and copy and paste into his report. And then for new engineers, we don't have to spend like, right, like two, two hours, like three hours like on, on Friday when you want to go home uh, just to put that report together. Um, so also, we, so I, after I created that, he wanted, like, he wanted more granularity, he wanted more and more details. So I created a page where you can choose a specific project or choose an organization. For example, uh, here, like, this is the Kubernetes organization, and it just aggregates all the projects together and get all that data too. Again, you can choose a time range. You can go back um, as soon as, as far as the, the, the engineers were hired. Um, and also wanted to include some, they also wanted to include some charts because we want to know how the, um, the investment that VMware made into the, the, um, our team is playing out. So those are the charts starting at the beginning of, the, um, of our, uh, our team. As you can see, it's growing. It's, it's, growing. it's, uh, it's up there. This, there was some issue here with, um, the issues open. One of my colleagues had to import a project and his script kind of failed and imported a bunch of issues on the same date. Um, so there's still a lot of work to be done here. Um, we have, we want, I want to do like a team view maybe, like where you can uh, choose like our sub teams, maybe like security or, or the Linux people and see just information for that team. That's very really important for the team leads. Um, maybe, um, I don't know if starting had is probably the best, um, the best use case for this, but a better way to uh, manage identities, just to know when someone joined, when they left, and things like that, what team they're on. Um, so that's right now. I'm just, I just have a config file that I have to like hard code myself, like uh, enter myself. Uh, then the graphs. Right now, I only have graphs for the entire team and for the entire uh, length of the of our team of our of my team. So we want to be able to have those graphs for a specific person, for a project, for the whole team, for pretty much any entity that's on the that's in the in my database. And obviously, I'd like to eventually either open source the whole thing if there's enough interest or maybe some parts of the implementation. I was just talking with the personal people about potentially um, doing some work with GraphQL because right now um, personal only supports the, the old uh, GitHub API. So um, hopefully we can work together, something like that. Um, and obviously the GraphQL API is still a bit building, building built, so it's still, uh, still work, um, work to be done from GitHub there. So um, let me, um, I'm about halfway done. Let me uh, show you the, the tool a little bit, more hands-on. So uh, it's running like in a small VM in California right now, so it's not the fastest, so I had to run it locally. Um, so you can choose the date, obviously. You can go back pretty far. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, let me just exit this. Thank you. All right, can you guys see? Yeah. Um, so that's just this project summary. Um, my, um, so it's, it's a local, uh, local host. Right? So like my, uh, the cron job from, uh, for the commits wasn't running. It's pretty heavy, it's pretty long to run. Um, so again, one box per, per project, pretty straightforward. We worked a lot with my uh, director to kind of get them um, like a good uh, format for him to just copy and paste into an email that he will like, eventually submit upwards. Um, so it's, the thing is that the team gets so big, ever since I joined, that we, uh, we started having so much data, right? So we can't just go through all of that, it's just too much. Um, so we go through a specific user. Uh, you can just look up someone here. He has a lot of PRs. You can see his work here. Every link will lead to the, to the link on GitHub. Um, then, like I said, we have the project details for a specific project. Um, for example, this, this doesn't have anything. So the last two weeks, right? Because uh, my boss sends an email every two weeks, so that's why he wanted the data to be uh, aggregated to. Um, 
then organization, which is the which is organization on GitHub. Um, let's see, Kubernetes. Oops. Should have mirrored my screen. So here, all the Kubernetes projects that we uh, that we contribute to have are just aggregated in one view. So, for example, for the for the team lead for the service for the um, orchestration team, you should go in here and like look at the like his all of his um, uh, employees, all of his engineers. Um, the charts, like I said, um, pretty straightforward. I just kind of hacked this together. Like it's uh, it could be improved, obviously. Uh, ideally, I like to have, like to be able to uh, input the the time periods, the nice per month. Um, we wanted to see by quarter because we work on financial quarters, um, and obviously, I also want to aggregate those 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 charts per um, per specific engineer. Right? So, some one, one person you want to see how much uh, how they've been evolving and everything. Um, so, I created a status page because I had a lot of issues at first with um, my services that were not that were crashing and that were not running properly. Um, and yeah, so that's the tool. Obviously, it's still a lot of a lot of work in progress. Let me go back to the presentation. Work in progress. I only spend five ten percent of my time on it. Um, and the reason why I wanted to come here is to talk to some people to see what like the interest of it. Um, it'd be great for any team that contributes to open source to open source on, on GitHub, right? At VMware, we have a lot of teams now that outside of the Open Source Technology Center that contribute more and more to open source. So they might be interested in it. And we, um, yeah, so I always kind of want to gauge the interest and um, see if, what parts of it people are interested in. And um, that's about it. So if anyone has any questions, I think we have a lot. I don't know if we have any more time left. I know we have a few more minutes. A few more minutes. If anyone has any questions, otherwise. Uh, on my team, yeah. so we have people in Bulgaria, we, Bulgaria, okay. Sofia. So that's half of our team. Then the other half is in the U.S. Um, we have six people in Palo Alto at the headquarters, right. and we have a lot of people from Portland actually that work from home. So half of the team actually works from home. Right. Uh, Why do you ask? Well, you know the reason is uh, you know European laws. They're a little. Uh, oh, okay. They're a little finicky about tracking people and uh, tracking. Right, so it's just on our team, right? It's just, and it, we're not we're not releasing any data. Sorry. Even within the company, I work for a software analysis company. Okay. And even within some of the companies here in the European region, they are it's taboo to track people. Okay. Okay. So it's one of the reasons we got to jump into tracking. Uh, okay. The part. They're, they're interested in all the metrics, but they don't want to see what the developers are doing because it's especially Germany, Austria. This country is where I deal with it. Okay, it's interesting. So even within the company, if we're not even releasing the data to anyone else. They, they don't want to, even though by law they can do that. Yeah. But, uh, they just don't want, want to be careful. Yeah, you know, because they have uh, all these, uh, they have what we call units. And, yeah. Uh, and they're just afraid that they open a, a can of worms and it's like, okay, uh, I don't want to know. I, I want to see maybe the commits. Or some of the stuff that we do, we use to anonymize. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Yeah, we to be honest, we didn't really consider that because just because it's one person using that tool, right? Um, but it's a good. Thank you for bringing this up. Okay. Interesting. Sorry. Power BI. Power BI. I know. I haven't, I haven't used that. Okay, Power BI. Yeah, power okay, I'll, I'll look into it. I use it. Okay, awesome. I think we sort of follow on to that. I was just curious what you're actually doing with the data that comes out of the dashboard. Like you said your management want, you know, gets an email. Well, what do they do with that information? Do you other, can you give us a sense of, of what they're dropping, draw, drawing out of this data? Um, well, I can't, I can't really talk for my boss, my big, big boss, right? It's, it's, um, um, I think it's just a, for, for them a way to track how the team is doing, like what, first of all, where they're contributing, um, like what impact they're making on those communities, those projects, and, um, 
and it was a big investment for VMware, so they want to make sure that things are running. So I assume that level of detail of the data, you know, going down. Oh yeah. These are the seven PRs that so and so. Exactly, and that's why actually, let me go back to um, um, to the tool. And that's why, so in the summary version, which is the part that he uh, actually copies and pastes, I made a summary, especially for the the comments, because you know, like on, on PRs and issues, like you, you, people get a lot of comments, and like you, you would get like huge lists. So that's why I would just like summarize one comment on one pull request. But for example, for the the actual pull request, that's pretty important stuff, right? So like I actually list the individual PRs. Um, now, if you go into the the, the detail. Um, Let's go for one user. Um, here in this case, I actually list all the comments. Just because maybe one more guy in the library here. Right? Um, yeah. So my question was around, are, it sounds like you're using this purely for like internal performance tracking and seeing who's doing what. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about using this tool to like see where you are, relatively speaking, with the larger projects in which you're working. I mean, so like Kubernetes, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you could, do you do, do it for that? Or is that not where you're going? So there's already like enough there's already a lot of tooling around that, right? So CNCF has a dev stat, right? Where you can see all the, um, where all the contributions come from. I know OpenStack has Stackalytics where you can kind of see also the, the different companies and how the different companies stack up against each other in terms of any metrics pretty much. Uh, so we, we look at those two, but this is very like, specifically for you know, team, looking at your team and how your team is doing uh, in terms of you know, like user-centric contributions, right? Not a company, or like not even project-centric. So, yeah. We're actually out of time. Okay. Thank you.